Okay. Denise? Oh, I get to say the welcome. Is that it, everybody? Yes, well, you would. Welcome us. Well, yes, welcome everybody this morning. You know, when it comes to success, I put down an important component is who you know. We all know that and just have to keep that in mind. So that is why our City Club Breakfast Committee people put out these Zoom meetings now to get people to connect with one another. Because at the center of your network, you've got to be the connector and you've got to be there and you've got to be visible. So um, new relationships, you know, you make your connections and you expand the horizons through that. And you never know what those relationships are gonna do. I mean, it's not always immediate. It could be several months down the road, even years. I mean, I've had somebody call me up and said, are you still at this number? I haven't heard from her for six years. So wow. it's, it's something that we wanna do here with our, so welcome and I hope everybody will have a great time listening to Lisa today. I'm certainly looking forward to it. All right. All right. Fantastic, uh, and, and just 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 want to uh, also welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Gary Martinez. I'm I'm part of uh, of uh, the the board for our Breakfast Club, and I'm very excited to be part of it. Uh, just also, also want to give an introduction to our fantastic board members and give them a big thank you, uh, because there's no way we could do the things with, that we do without all their support. And we have uh, Denise Anthony, uh, we have our uh, our amazing Vernon Webb, our chair, uh, Mitch Woolley. And uh, along my uh, and Margaret Brown, uh, and along myself, Gary Martinez. And again, thank you, everyone. I uh, can't wait to see everyone. And I'm going to hand it over to Margaret Brown to uh, make the introduction to today's presenter. What happened to Margaret? I think uh, Margaret had a client um, at eight. She had told us earlier that she was going to have to bump off right at eight o'clock. Um, so I think she. Bump off. Oh. Well, who's going to introduce Lisa? I I will be Margaret. You want me? To, I can very happily. I can be Margaret and introduce myself. So Sometimes here's my friend Lisa. You're not doing right, do it yourself. <laughs> here's my friend Lisa. Though, so um, I am Lisa Cooley Malice. I'm a time strategist, which means I work with service-based business owners, helping them figure out how to accomplish more without actually working more. And you'll get a good feel for my background and things like that throughout the presentation. Um, one of the things that um, Margaret was going to share is how her and I met. So we are both members of NABO, which is the National Association of Women Business Owners. And what's cool about that is she's in the LA chapter and I'm in the Cleveland chapter. And we met in San Antonio six years ago. And since then have been able to um, stay in touch and collaborate on some projects together and to do some things. So um, as we were talking earlier, one of the great things about the virtual world right now is I actually get to come come out there with you all this morning where typically this would not have been something we've been able to do together. So with that being said, um, is it all right if we jump in? I don't want to, Mitch Vernon, everything okay if we jump in right away? All right, then let me share my screen. Yes, by all means. All right, so let me share my screen with you. And make sure you give me a holler if I share the screen and then I'm the only one that can see it, so be sure to stop me along the way. All right, so welcome to It's About Time, a creative productivity plan that works for you. How many of you can relate to this picture? Give me a hands up if you can relate to this picture where you're spinning all the plates, you're trying to keep it all in line. Excellent. You're in the right place. Good news. You're totally in the right place right now. Uh, thank you, Gary. <laughs> I love the hands up. All right, so this, um, this used to be me. I mean, more coordinated version of me and my hair was, you know, a little longer in that picture, but I was also in that place where I was trying to keep everything um, together. And when I first started my business, I came from high school education and I started my business as a time management coach. And I would get up super early in the morning. It was summertime and I'd come into my office and I was, I was bound and determined to learn how to blog. I don't know why I thought that was the best business building activity, but I was determined it was. And so I was in here super early and my husband's a school teacher. So he's off in the summer and he would come out and he'd sit on the deck right outside my window. And he'd holler in after a couple hours, are you going to come out and have breakfast with me? And every time I would say, absolutely. Let me just finish this one thing. And whatever that thing was, it would change, but it was the same 
I, it was the same thing. And fast forward, it's August, three days before he goes back to school. And I realize I have not had breakfast with him one time. And summers are the only time that we have that opportunity to do that. And then I took a step back and I thought, here you are helping business owners figure out how they can spend more time with their families and more time volunteering and more time doing the things they love. And you are being exceptionally unauthentic. You better get your stuff together. And I didn't actually use the word stuff, but I don't know you well enough to give you the word I used. And so at that point, I said, all right, back it up. More education. Because that's always my answer coming from the world of education. So more coaching certificates, more tools to my toolbox. And then it still wasn't enough. And I thought, okay, you need to dig a little bit deeper. It's not about the latest app. It's not about the special calendar. And so I created a process. And on your action guide, which Margaret dropped the um, link into the chat again for us, and Mitch sent it out for you guys last night, there's the process that I created. That was what I needed to make sure that I was walking the walk that I needed to do to be authentic with my clients. And the good news is I now have routinely have breakfast um, with my husband in the summers and you know on the weekends too. So let's talk about some logistics. The, um, here's what's important for today. You will, um, you have an action guide because a lot of what I'll say, you will say, oh, I know that. But it's not about so much knowing it, it's about actually doing it. Like, are you doing it? And one of the best ways to be able to make sure you're doing it is to put things in the action guide. So print it out if you're a person who likes to write or feel free to, it's fillable. Um, they popped in the fillable link, so go ahead and do that. The other thing about today that's important to know is this isn't the Lisa Curly Malice show. You have questions, pop them in the chat. I pardon when I look away from the camera because I have the chat over here on the left, but pop the questions in there. I want, I absolutely want you to participate. The other thing that I know from working with busy business owners is you're busy and you think, many of you, that you've mastered the art of pulling up your email right here so it looks like you're looking at the camera, but you're really typing away. 14 months now, I've been doing this stuff on Zoom. I am aware of your tricks. And what I'm going to say is, if you kind of pay attention, you will kind of get results. So I'm asking you today, give yourself the benefit of actually paying attention. So what is it that we're gonna to cover today? Well, we are gonna cover the number one most important thing you need to know about time management. And we're gonna cover exactly where you're spending your time. And finally, a process to overcome any productivity bottleneck that you are facing. So in the chat, why is this topic important to you? Why is it that you wanna know about time management? Why did you come to listen today? Why did you register and show up? So pop it in the chat for me, please. Why is this important to you? Absolutely, Pamela. Time poverty, more free time. Get more accomplished. Ah, uh, yes, difference between being busy and productive. I wanna be productive and we are going to talk about that today. Absolutely, all right, thank you very much for participating and for sharing. Okay, here is what I know for sure. Sorry, I lost the clicker. Um, anyone can master time management. I know this for sure. I get it, they do not teach this in school and it is super easy to get frustrated. And I don't care how many books you've read <laughs> and how much you've tried to make it work, you, anyone can master the skill. The second thing is that customization is key. When it comes to your personal time management, it is about you, your strengths and your 
the structure that works best for you. It's not about more discipline. It is not about working harder. And it is possible to eliminate the too much to do, not enough time that we get that feeling. Like anyone can create the structure in the process to where you have time to do the things that you love and you have time to work on the business instead of just in the business. All right, so first thing, number one, most important thing that you need to know about time management, are you ready? Drum roll if you've got it, it's not time management. <laughs> and I know that right now some of you are thinking, who is that Margaret Brown and why is she bringing this person in and bait and switching me right now? And I get it, my clients feel the same way when I tell them it's not about time management at all. In fact, what it is, it's all about choice management. It is not about managing your calendar. It's not about the, an app or, you know, like they have those calendars now with stickers and stuff. Like, it's not that, it's about managing you. Today, while we're together, you will have short-term motivation because we're here, we're all in it together, we're doing it. What you need to do to move from short-term motivation to long-term transformation is this mindset shift around choices, not around managing your time. If you take nothing else away from our time together today, and I hope you take like a bazillion things away, but if that's the only thing you take away that it's about you and your choices, that is the best thing that you can take away. Recognize that when you have that feeling of, oh, I don't know where the day went, it just got out of control, or it's noon and all I've done is answer my email, or all of those versions of things, that's you allowing it to run out of control. So put your hand to your chest, please. Sorry, I will, this will be the last time I'll say please. I'm, I'll be very direct of the rest of our time together. Put your hand to your chest, and I want you to feel your heartbeat. Now, conscious of your breathing, breathe in and out and in and out. You're never going to get those breaths back. You'll never get the, that heartbeat back. I just stole from you three beats of your heart and two breaths. And if that helps you remember that time is slipping away, like we said, it's a non-renewable resource, then good. You would never leave your wallet sitting out on the table in a crowd, nor would you walk around with your ATM card willy-nilly saying, here's my card and here's the pin to go in there. Yet, routinely, we will let our time slip away. The good news is we can fix it and we can do it through thinking about choice management versus time management. I learn better from people. So let me share a story how to switch from one to the other because it's, it's um, what is that, easy to understand but not necessarily simple to implement. And so here's Leslie. Leslie knew that for her business to grow, she had to work on the business, not in the business as much. Raise your hand if that is a familiar refrain to you. You know the whole working on the business versus in the business, okay. So Leslie started as a clinician and then grew the business. And so as a therapist, she just added more employees. How many of you started as the primary service provider and then added people? Or you play both roles, you are the primary service provider and you're the business owner at the same time, okay. So you get the fact that when you're doing two things at once and there's a conflict, something gets pushed. And what's the thing that gets pushed? Uh, the, uh, on the business stuff, always. Because you have to provide the services, people are there waiting for you. So it's on the business stuff that gets pushed. So when Leslie and I started, she recognized she was working to, you know, like basically working two jobs. And so what we did was this exercise that you guys are gonna do in a couple minutes. And it helped her recognize where she was actually spending her time. Then we moved to the place of, okay, let's make a mindset shift and let's build some processes. Let's figure out where to go from there. And then 
settle in and see what we can do. So she was able to do that. So she went from about 60 hours a week to 40 and she was pretty happy with that. Just working on the business, things were great. And then hello, the world changed and there was a pandemic. And now everything that was working for her, the helping her go from 60 to 40 wasn't enough. Because she has two kids, five and six years old, and due to health reasons, she decided to homeschool them for the year. And there's no way that she could homeschool them and spend 40 hours in the business. So we went back through again and we evaluated where was she spending her time, where was she choosing to do, what could change, and she was able to drop it from 60 to 40 to 20. Business is booming. It all started with switching her mindset and doing this magical exercise that you are about to do. So you get the bonus of being able to move into how do you move your exercise? This is the, where are you spending your time exercise? Or as my clients call it, the smiles and dollars exercise. And so when I work with clients, what we do is we go through this awe process, which is what I shared with you at the beginning. This is what got me out on the deck <laughs> having breakfast with my husband, like all the books and everything didn't do it. It was this. And so this is what you guys will be going through partly today. We're going to stick around in the awareness eight space, but that's what you're going to do. So I'm going to locate you really quickly. Just awareness about discovering if there's a disconnect. So in Leslie's case, she realized that she was doing two jobs and that was not what she wanted. There was a disconnect for her. Then the work stage is figuring out how you get from where you are is the bridge, wherever you are to where you wanna be. And so in her case, there were some processes we could get together to drop from 60 to 40 hours a week. And then the last stage of the awe process is evaluation, is making sure that what you put in place is actually working. And that's when she recognized, hey, wait a minute, 40 is great, but I need to get down to 20 in order to make sure that I can homeschool my kids and run the business. So, as I said, it's a possible disconnect and it may, it's a possible disconnect. Some of you may be in a place right now where you get that you are spending the time exactly where you want to and everything's great. And boy, isn't that a wonderful thing to know. So here we go on your action guide. I want you to write down top left hand corner uh, or top, it says uh, number one personal goal. Jot down your number one personal goal. And once you finish that, go ahead and jot down your number one business goal. And when I rush you, just holler at me to slow down any more time because I will invariably rush you. What if you have a couple of personal goals and a couple of business goals? Number one, Denise. Pick your favorite kid right now. Pick the top goal of each. Otherwise, this work, this whole exercise goes out the window. Okay. Now, the next thing that I want you to do is to write down all your tasks, meetings, projects, everything that was on your plate in the last 48 hours. So grab your to-do list. This is, <laughs> this is a presenter's worst nightmare. If your to-do list or calendar is on your computer, open it up and look at it. Jot these things down. All your tasks, all your projects, all your meetings, I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to do this. Don't worry if you don't capture everything. You just wanna make sure you have about probably eight to 10 things at least on your list. You can always come back to this exercise later. So to give you an example, here are some of the things that were on my list the last couple of days. So um, attending a NABO board meeting, watching module eight of a photography course I'm taking, doing some client calls.
Go ahead and look up for me when you have at least eight things on your list. Just let me know you're done. Thank you. And remember, you can revisit this in the future. So the next thing that I want you to do is put a smiley face next to any activity that directly relates to your number one personal goal. So my number one personal goal right now is getting out of a kayak without help, without falling flat on my face in the water. For whatever reason, I don't yet have quite the right balance and it's just, it's an adventure every time we go kayaking. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a fail. So <laughs> on my list, going and working out, because I am convinced that a stronger core, thank you, Denise, for saying that earlier, I am convinced a stronger core and slimming down a little bit will help me get out of the kayak without falling. Um, so working out and cooking dinner, a healthy dinner, both of those things get smiley faces for me. So smiley faces next to anything that is directly related to your top personal goal. And then dollar signs next to any task, project, meeting, anything you did in the last 48 hours that is directly related to your top business goal. So we're launching a new group program. I met with my team for that. That's directly related to my increasing income goal. Client calls. I still provide services in my business that is directly related there and recording bottleneck videos. It's a way that we're marketing the new group program and you guys will actually get to see what that looks like in a couple minutes. That's directly related. So you should have smiley faces on there and dollar signs on there. And if you'll notice on my list, there are things that don't have a smiley face or a dollar sign. So moderating a past president's round table for Navo doesn't have one. Doesn't mean it's a bad activity, it just means it is not directly related to one of my top two goals. Attending our board meeting, babysitting my granddaughter, like those are not, those are not one of my top two goals. So here's the tough love. Everything on your list that does not have a smiley face or a dollar sign is keeping you from achieving your top goals. Doesn't mean the stuff on the list is bad. It just means you have a choice about what you put on your list and what you do every day. And everything that does not have a smiley face or a dollar sign is keeping you from achieving your top goals. Remember, it's about a mindset shift. This is about choice management. Let me go back to the story about Leslie. The first time she did this exercise, about 20% of what was on her list actually directly related to her top two goals. As we continue to work, now she's at the place where about 80% is. And she did not do that by adding a whole bunch of stuff on to raise the percentage. She did that by choosing what goes on there differently. So here's what's going to happen. In a moment, Mitch is magically going to send you into breakout rooms. While you're in there, you are going to, you're gonna be in there for five minutes, do a quick introduction around the room. The person, with, the person with the longest hair gets to start talking first. And I want you to talk about what is, or shortest if you feel the need for it. We're gonna go longest here, we're gonna keep it, keep it simple. Um, and what I want you to talk about in there is what did you discover and what will you do about that? And then when you come back, I'm gonna ask you to share in the chat so everyone can see, okay? So Mitch is gonna shoot you all away in a moment, five minutes, what did you discover? What will you do? And then you'll get a one minute morning and then you will all be coming back. Any questions before you get zoomed out? Okay, go ahead, Mitch, thanks. Oh, sorry.
Sorry, got to unmute. There we go. Are you moving? You can move. Do you want to move George into the room I just pulled back from? No, Jorge. Hey, uh, where? I'm where? Sorry. I said. Okay. I said. I just get in. Uh, yeah, he I just work. came in, and I literally, as I was going through, I had to cancel it and go back again because he just dropped in, and I right. wanted it to collect because as soon as you open the box, it won't collect anybody. So, okay. Jorge, I can remove. I'm going to move you into breakout room two. Okay, thank you. So, thank you. Jorge, give me a second, Robasso. Where are you? Yeah. Thank you, Robasso. Is moved to. You know what? I'm going to move to breakout two. Breakout two. Okay. So there you go. And where would you like me to move you? No, I came out. Oh, you came out. Yeah, I know. It says yeah. you're not joining. Okay. So I'm going to yeah. drop myself in this number four because, oh, this one's only got two also. We should have probably put three. Uh, That's right. Two's fine. They're only in there for five minutes. Is it? But feel free to bounce into either Dude, one. Dude, I don't even know which one I'm in. <laughs> Wait, which one am I in? You aren't in one because you're the host, so you just can join any one you want. Oh, oh okay. So let me go in and uh, I'm going to go into this one here with, okay, I'm going to, well, how do I move myself? Um, you can click down in the breakout room thing. You can click join. But if you do that, can you still broadcast the one minute morning when you're in there? I think so. Okay. Well, I mean, I, it's all set up. It's all set up to broadcast one minute warning. Oh, awesome. And you know what I can do? I've got a little pop up, pop down. It says broadcast a message to all, and I can type a message. So I'm going to go ahead and join uh, room four. Okay. Awesome. Perfect. Hi. Thank you. Hello. Hey, Mitch. How you doing? Good, good. We were just making initial introductions here. Okay. So I joined you because it's kind of wonky. There's like a couple of rooms with only like two people. So it was like, oh, let me move some people around. So everybody's got three except for room six. So yeah, so that's good. That's good. Okay, so what's our, uh, what's our goal now? I said we're just starting with introductions um, and then we're gonna go through and see what we've learned from putting together the tasks, right? Yeah, yeah, and we don't have much time. So we've already burned a minute, I think. So we're gonna have to kind of go, go fast. So, so what, did, what did you learn? Are you asking me? Yeah. Um, well, it was surprising to me that I put down eight different tasks and it came down to smiley faces and dollar signs. I only had two tasks that, that had either um, a smiley face or a dollar sign. And those tasks were both of them are the same. So I had only of, the two, of the eight tasks, I only had two tasks that um, are aimed to my top personal goal and my top work goal and six other tasks that I'm gonna have to uh, get some serious thought about. Hi, how about you, Bernice? Oh, wow, I was just sharing that uh, I need to, to organize myself. <laughs> and um, I came primarily to learn because um, I am coordinating a Latino graduation at the park under COVID-19 rules and it's very, um, um, very difficult and uh, it's going to be June 6th so I'm very close to the date so um, my task number one is to organize myself to just put um, in paper what I have to do with that lines that's where I am yeah I have a ridiculous nine page to do list <laughs> that what I do is I don't try to get it all done. Every time I have an idea or something I want to do, I'll add it onto that list. So I, because I, I can't, I have to have some place to organize my thoughts. So I have a Google document with literally nine pages and it's just ridiculous. And all I end up doing is I end up just kind of shuffling around and I spend a lot of time managing the list. So I have to figure out a better system, but I have to tell you, I've been to tons and tons of time management classes. Oh, one minute. Time is up for the breakout rooms. Do you want to close all breakout rooms? Uh, yeah, we probably better. But most of the things do not have dollar signs and do not have smiley faces on it. It's busy work that I'm doing for other people. So I have to have better control of my time. So that's it. Oh, time is up. I got to go back. Okay. Back in the session. 
Okay. And 15 and 56 seconds. Yeah, it says 60 seconds now. So it just gave me a time that I have to call it because that was a four minute warning. Okay. So, or the one minute warning. So, yeah. So we break out room. Welcome back. Welcome back. Oops, Mitch, you're muted if you're. Oh, sorry. That's right. When you come into new rooms, it mutes. Yeah. So it says your time is up. And I'm like, that's why you warned me, Lisa, because it told me the time is up as if. So then when I clicked it, it says, oh, there's a 60 second warning. It was basically telling me you've been four minutes. You've got one minute left, but it didn't say that. It says your time is up. All right. That's right. Well, continue. You guys continue the conversation until the rest of the, the peeps come back. You know, it was, oh, and here it they was, come. <laughs> oh, here they come. Coming back. <laughs> and here we all are again. All right. Thank you for zooming out and zooming back. I think we're all back now. Yeah. Close break out right. four seconds. It's it's almost done. Two, one. Okay. Here comes right, the now rest. We're back. Officially. Okay. Here we go. Here comes there the Here we rest. go. All right. If you would please drop your takeaway in the chat. What did you discover from doing that exercise? Good, bad, ambivalent? What did you discover? Thanks, Mitch, for sharing. I've been to dozens of these time management workshops and things like that. And at no other time, even the seven successful, the, the, the Franklin Covey or whatever it is, the seven successful things. Mm -hmm. And at no other time have I ever had something that's more glaring and something as super simple as put a smiley face and a dollar sign next to it and, and aligning it with those two personal and business goals. Yeah. And I've never had anybody do that. And it's so simple and it really, really made me good. Thank you. I'm, I'm taking on a lot of stuff for other people. I volunteer and stuff like that, but at some point you really have to draw a line and say, I, I, I need to do my stuff. Yeah. So how many of you feel some, so first, thank you for the compliment. Um, I, at no point did I ever promise you like high, super high level stuff. Smiley face and dollar signs is who I am and where it's at. So how many of you have experienced similar to Mitch where you were not as happy about the number of smileys and dollars? Okay. How many of you had a different type of awareness where you're like, huh, I'm pretty good right here. I'm pretty happy with what's on my list and what I'm getting. Okay. Thank you. And how many of you are still processing? Okay, so thank you, thank you. For me, like this all hits like six weeks down the road. Like I'll be like, oh yeah, that's what I was supposed to get from that exercise. Okay, and any type of that awareness is good. It's about knowing where you are. And so one of the, so thank you Vernon, still processing, that's totally me. Um, so one of the things that's important to know is that typically when I do this exercise with clients, what initially comes up is frustration. Um, it's just that feeling of no matter how many smileys or dollars I have, it's just, it's not as many as I wanted. Um, I want a higher percentage or whatever. And one of the reasons a lot of times that that happens is actually based back in time management. So if we move out of choice management for a second, because this is all about the choices of what you're putting on your plate, we move it back to time management. What happens a lot of times is that you have some sort of a unidentified productivity bottleneck. And it can look different for all of you, but there's something that's keeping you from getting the amount of time you need or you want, however you wanna phrase that, to work on those things that are smiles and dollars. Something's keeping you from there. And so that's what we're gonna talk about. Let me flip my screen around again so that I, let me share for you. Okay, so we're going to talk about this unidentified productivity bottleneck concept here for a second. Look at the two circles. 
And tell me, or you know, I don't have to tell me, sorry, just think in your head, answer this yourself. Are you the type of person who spends a lot of time fixing a problem and a little bit of time identifying? Or a lot of time identifying and a little bit of time fixing? Valerie, I tell you, you're on my first screen right here. I just have to thank you for smiling. <laughs> I know you're getting what I'm saying. So thank you for that. I am a fixer. I'm a doer. Like I want to jump in right away and fix the problem. And sometimes there's not even a problem, but I totally want to get in and fix it. Well, what happens is when we default there, most of the time we fix the wrong problem. And so we may think we know what our bottleneck is, but it could be something entirely different. So I'm going to show you what I mean by this. And so what I need, please, is a volunteer. And before you volunteer, let me tell you what you're volunteering for. Because some of you are like, yeah, I'll help. But let's make sure you really mean it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I want to help you figure out, one person will help figure out what your productivity bottleneck is. And so what that means is that, hang on, let me stop the share. You are going to um, just tell me what's going on, what, what's keeping you from accomplishing everything you want in a day. And then I'm gonna dig in for a couple minutes. It's my job to ask the right questions. It's your job just to answer them however it comes up in your brain. Most of the people that I do this with, what they think is it and what it ends up being are two different things. So don't be attached to the outcome, just be open to the process. So if you're willing to do that, then pop your name in the chat and the first name I see is the winner. All right, Valerie, it's you. Thank you. All right. Oh boy. <laughs> Remember, the pressure, Valerie, is all on me to ask the right questions. You just answer them. Okay. okay. So. What's keeping you from accomplishing everything you want to accomplish in a day? Too many things to do. Okay. Tell me more about that. Um, they all seem to have the same priority. And everything is a project. So not just one thing that I can cross off. Mm -hmm. And has it always been this way? Yes. And what have you tried in the past so that this was not a problem? Prioritizing, um, delegating, but then I take it back if people don't do things the way I like for them to do it. Um, <clears throat> hiring out like completely. So, but I end up in the spinning and trying to just keep getting things done. And so I have no days where I feel satisfied that I got things done. Okay. What is the, what's your zone of genius or your highest and best use in your company? <laughs> I am an implementation coach and a speaker. <laughs> okay. okay. And so what would be, what would be the activities that would be of your highest and best use? Actually helping other people get things done, understanding who they are through personality mm -hmm. type. Mm -hmm. That's my thing. Why do we do things the way we do them? What's, what's okay. driving these actions? Okay. And so when we started, one of the things I'm hearing you say is that you just have too much to do. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree. I believe that you're right. And I feel that your bottleneck, and again, remember, this is very quick, guys, but this is kind of the idea of where, yeah. how it goes your bottleneck is that you're not staying in your lane. It's not that you have too much to do, it's that there's too much to get done, but you're not doing your zone of genius, best and highest use, whatever phrasing that you use. How does that feel for you, Valerie? That, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so now if, thank you, sorry. Thank you for playing, <laughs> I was supposed to thank you also. Thank you, Valerie, for being a guinea pig and for playing there. So. Let's go back to what, why we did that exercise really quickly and what that means. If Valerie spends her time trying to fix what she thinks her bottleneck is, which is just that there's too much stuff, 
that's completely different than trying to fix the bottleneck of how do I stay in my zone? How do I stay in my lane? How do I get rid of my other stuff? Does that make sense? Give me a head, sorry, I'm all, I can only see like five of you. So I need the right people to give me a heads up. Okay, awesome, all right, thank you. So let's talk about what that means in the real world. And so here's Lori. I wanna talk about how this really works. Lori thought her bottleneck was that she had too many clients. <laughs> like, and I'll write, sometimes I'm like, boy, I want that to be my bottleneck. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh my gosh, Dr. Natalie, your eyes just now. Yeah, that's the bottleneck I want. She was positive that she had too many clients. And so she actually closed her business from taking on new clients for a while. And even with that, she still felt she wasn't spending enough time with her family. She would go home. She'd pack up all her stuff to go home. She'd do her work at home. She'd answer emails at night, all of that. Once we went through that all process awareness and we dug into what her bottleneck was, what we, she, we found out, and this may be similar for you, Valerie, is that she was underutilizing her staff. She has this amazing assistant, Amanda, and she was not using her to her fullest potential. And once we could figure that out, then we could dig in, get some stuff off her plate, dig in, find her next bottleneck, dig in, find her next bottleneck, and around we go. So the great news is she's reopened to business. She is taking on new clients. And she started a nonprofit because there was a um, population that she really wanted to serve, but that really can't afford her services that she could never get to before because she had closed her business of paying clients, let alone people who couldn't pay her services. And out of all of this, what she would say is the best news is she gets to go home, very seldom takes work home, and she has four boys at home, single mom, four boys. Being present with them is a high priority to her. Now, all of that being said, if she would have fixed the bottleneck she thought, which was I have too many clients, think of all the money that would have went flying out the door and all the people she wouldn't be able to serve. So my point of all of that is you want to make sure that you can fix, you can identify the right thing so that you're fixing the right thing. Now, because of time, I am not able to dig in with each and every one of you on our call today. <laughs> and if you want some more exposure to different bottlenecks, what I want you to do, please, is pop your name and email in the chat and I will send, or Holly, my assistant, I am using more and more, will send it to you. Um, it's a bottleneck bundle. It's just a bunch of videos that you can watch of people going through the process I went through with Valerie. Plus, you can figure out how much money is your bottleneck actually costing you. Like I have an evaluation of getting dollars and cents. And then the top three bottlenecks I typically see with clients, you will get solutions to those top three. Now, finally, Last point, and remember, if you have questions, keep popping them in the chat for me, please. Before we start this last teaching point, let's review where we've been so far. The first thing we talked about, it's not about time management, it's about choice management. You have the opportunity to make the choices. You now have, point number two, you now have a new awareness around where you're spending your time, how many of those are smiles and dollars, which led us to this place of an unidentified productivity bottleneck that you may have that's keeping you from having all the time you need. So there's this process, which will shock you, it's the all process. I know I've only said that a hundred times so far today, but what I want you to do on the second page of your action guide is I want you to rank yourself on a one to four. Because remember, today is not about that short-term motivation when we're right here, right now, we're so excited we're gonna get it. It's about long-term transformation. So you wanna know how strong are you in each of these three points. So the first one is one to four awareness. A one means you're spinning your wheels all the time. You're trying to juggle everything. You have no idea why what you're doing isn't working. You're trying really hard and it's not there. A four is you know exactly what the problem is. You may or may not know how to solve it, but at least you know you have the, you know what the right problem is. So one to four. Next one is the work. This is the stage that we are all, or I shouldn't say all, most of us are most familiar with. It's the work, work, work stage. 
my clients will come to me and ask, how do I work smarter, not harder? This is where that happens in the work stage. So here's the criteria on how to evaluate yourself on a scale of one to four. It's, is it easy or is it hard? If your solution to whatever the disconnect is, is hard to do, if you hear yourself saying things like, I'm going to make myself get up earlier, or I have to just try harder, I have to dig in more, um, you know, it's all about discipline. Like if those are the things that you say, it's a hard solution that you've chosen to adopt. That's a one on a scale of one to four. If you slide into it pretty easily, that's a four. If you know that here's a solution, I follow it, it works, it's easy, perfect, that's a four. The last one I want you to evaluate yourself on is evaluation. One of the secrets to life is if we did more of what worked and less of what didn't, life would be so grand. And we don't slow down long enough to figure out what in the world is working. So once again, write yourself one to four. A one means when you find something that works, you keep doing it and doing it and doing it and it no longer works and you don't even notice. <laughs> or a four is you continually go back, you track it, you tweak it, you make sure that you're solving the right problem. So in Leslie's case, the evaluation stage came in for her when she recognized, oh, hey, I need to go. My solutions aren't going to get me from 40 hours to 20 hours. I need new solutions. So just a quick one to four ranking on those things. Okay, so now what's next? Here's what we've done. You identified time management isn't the answer. Choice management is. You know where you're spending your time. And you have a three-step process to solve any productivity bottleneck. And you know now on a scale of one to four where you're comfortable and where you may need some support. So let's create some next steps so that you have lasting impact from our hour together today instead of just the short-term motivation. Bite-size action. On your action guide. What's a bite-sized action that you can take? Take a minute, I'll be quiet for a couple seconds. Look your notes over, write down one bite-sized action that you can take on your action guide. Okay, now open your, now I want you to close your eyes. Because bite size is great, but less you all deserve something a little bigger than bite size. So imagine the comfort in knowing that you have a plan to accomplish everything that's important each day. The relief in not worrying about dropping one of the many balls that you're juggling. You can actually write a to-do list and finish it instead of transferring tasks over day to day to day. When a fire happens, you have the space to actually accomplish the fire without it derailing your day and the next and the next after that. Okay, open your eyes. Is that a vision that you could get excited about? So now, let's get real. What's the challenge with that vision? Like right now, here we are, clear, inspired, you have short-term motivation. But how do you get, stay focused and stay motivated when you click leave on the Zoom meeting and life starts coming at you super fast? What do you do when you have an inbox full of email, a to-do list a mile long, projects to finish? The reality is it's hard to keep your focus after our time together today. So here's what you need to do. Identify your support system on your action guide. 
tool you use to help you implement and stay on track. When you're thinking about what you need and what you want, who do you have in your corner that's gonna help you stay accountable and give you the support and guidance to take those ones and twos and threes and bump them over to four. Jot that person's name in your action guide. Now, some of you may already have a coach or mentor. That's awesome. For those of you who don't, I invite you to work with me. And what does that mean? I invite you to work with me. It sounds so fancy. Here's the deal. It means something different to everybody, which is why I offer complimentary breakthrough sessions to make sure that we're a good fit and that I have the solution that you actually need. So if you want to figure out how to work less and accomplish more and have fun along the way, then you just schedule a call with me. It's a complimentary productivity breakthrough session and you can schedule it at impactedstrategies.as.me. And that link is on your action guide also. If you're thinking, should I jump on a call? Shouldn't I jump on the call? Here's the deal. It's a great option for you if you are not happy about the number of smiles and dollars that are on your sheet. It's a great option for you if you think you have a bottleneck, but you're not really sure what it is, or you know what it is, but you don't know how to solve it. That's a great option for you too. Um, it's a great option for you if you're just frustrated with how things are and you can't quite put your finger on why. Because what we do in that session is we'll just chat for about 30 minutes. I'll dig into what's happening with you. We will look at what some solutions could look like if we are both a good fit. We'll talk about what it means to work together. And if we're not, I'll give you a referral and send you on your way. Um, so all you do is jump on impactingstrategies.as.me. 30 minute complimentary productivity breakthrough session. Pick your time zone because <laughs> you are not in mine. And then pick your slot. And away we go. So my last thing for you all today, don't let the fear of the time it will take to accomplish something stand in the way of your doing it. The time will pass anyway. We might just as well put that passing time to the best possible use. Earl Nightingale. And thank you. I'm going to look in the chat now. Um, but I want to thank the person who just told me, Mitch, thank you that all the rows are connected on my fillable form. I will fix that for future reference. Thank you. But other questions, anything else I can answer before, um, before I jump off? No. Nothing else? You were that thorough. Okay. Thank you for that compliment. I so know that's not true, but thank you. I appreciate the compliment. Any other, to, anything else? All right, back to you, Vernon. Lisa, 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 can't begin to thank you enough for all that you've shared. Uh, it's certainly been beneficial to me just to begin to think about the different things that I do because I just do them without thinking about them. And so now it's giving me a whole different perspective about looking at what it is that I do and then deciding whether it should have a dollar sign or a smiley face in front of it. Uh, so again, thank you very much. And I think we all, I'm speaking for everyone, we all enjoyed the time we spent with you. <laughs>